have a plan for a few synthesizer modules that I'm going to be bringing out this year, be it in stripboard form or the panel projects. But I came up with a bit of an issue. I suck at coding coding Arduinos and things like that. Don't get me wrong, I can get it to do what I want it to, but the process of doing that is for me uh, slow and just tedious. And in my never ending struggle of trying to reduce the use of a computer in my life, I mean, coding isn't really kind of working with that. Don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna use it. However, a lot of the things that I'm getting these Arduinos to do in a lot of these projects are actually really quite simple. So what if instead of using microcontrollers, why don't I use other components to actually try and do the job instead? For instance, logic gates, all of that stuff. And in the future, when you hear about some of these uh, kind of modules that I'm thinking about, that are reasonably on the complicated side you're gonna be like why are you gonna bother doing it that way and the answer to you is I don't know there's something just attractive about it and it seems like a really good opportunity to learn from the base down about how a lot of these things worked. So I mentioned this in a vlog on my Patreon about a month ago, including a sequencer, a reasonably simple sequencer that I'm planning on building using this method. This sequencer needs to be able to retain a number of voltages that you can recall. And I mentioned my sort of rough plan of using a circuit called a sample and hold. A sample and hold circuit basically samples a voltage, kind of takes the sample and it holds it, sample and hold. And it holds that voltage for you to kind of read from the voltage until you tell it to sample it again and it takes the voltage and samples it again and this is a means of being able to retain a voltage however the problem with an analog sample and hold circuit is there are various environmental factors that mean that it's never going to be able to hold that voltage for an extremely long amount of time before that voltage sort of kind of drifts and goes out of tune which sadly to that specific sequencer that I'm planning is a no-no. So a kind person by the name of Antoine uh, commented on the blog saying, well instead of storing the voltage in a sample and hold circuit, why don't you retain it in digital bits? And I know this sort of comes back to the Arduinos, however, you can do this without using a microcontroller. He mentioned actually using SRAM chips, static random access memory, but um, instead of using them for computers and storing that, why don't you store the voltages in one of those and then recall those voltages using a digital to analog converter. I'm aware a lot of what I just said might be complete gobbledygook, so let's go and look at something completely different. So this circuit right here is completely the opposite of what I was talking about. I was talking about something that would store digital bits and convert them into analog voltages using a digital to analog converter. You may have heard of a DAC before, that's what it stands for. Well this chip right here is exactly the opposite to that, it's called an analog to digital converter. ADC for short, but to annoy people I'm going to call it an ADC. So what this ADCA is getting is a voltage going into the ADCA <laughs> and it's converting it into an 8-bit digital value. And each of these LEDs is a single bit. There's eight of them, so eight bits. You can hear an oscillator right now. This oscillator is receiving the same voltage as the ADCA. What happens when we turn up that voltage? Well, let's find out, shall we? Oh, turn it back down again. And what you're seeing with these LEDs is the analog voltage being converted into 8 bits. Let's uh, see it again for good luck. So 8 bits has 256 different values. So you can see it's running through all of these combinations. And I've managed to actually squeeze quite a few different designs out of this that we will be looking at in the future. However, this video is about the first design that I came up with, which is called the 123 ADC. Basically what this 123 ADC is actually going to be doing is, is taking this whole thing and using each of these lights as triggers for drums or something like that. Take it away, starting with the stripboard layer, and then let's go. If you'd like to see this thoroughly riveting piece of videography, it's available over on my other channel, Look Mum No Computer, but more serious-ish. But let's get back to what it sounds like after this. It looks lovely. Yes, the process is rather riveting indeed. Ooh. So yeah, here it is, the 123 free ADC. It's basically that circuit on the breadboard, but uh, you know, in a module. So let's put it in the modular synth and see what we can do with it. Oh yeah. Oh god, I just broke it. <laughs> 
pop it in here. When you turn it on first, it could actually show anything from none of them on at all to a couple of them on to the whole thing on. It's just random when you turn it on first. First thing I'm going to do is actually plug something into the clock. Basically what the clock does is it tells it to sample. It's like an 8-bit sample and hold in a way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this jack into the square out of this oscillator and that's going to be like a quick clock source. Now it turns off because there's nothing in there so it's sampling nothing at all. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get the CV and I'm going to plug it into a constant voltage source which is this ADSR which is actually jacked on to be on permanently so when I turn up the sustain you see that light here uh, increases in voltage. Boom and I'm going to turn it up slowly as it gets brighter more, more of the dip bits go into the register. Look at them, they're slowly filling up until we get to a 5 volt range, which is this. And when it's full, this light turns off. So I'm going to turn it back down and see this light turn back on when it's, when it's not full anymore. Wee, 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 wee. And if I want to sample whatever voltage goes in at that time, plug it in, unplug it, and then, look, these are stuck in there. It's pretty snazzy. Woo, woo, woo. Ooh. Right now I'm going to plug the clock into like a clock source from a BeatStep Pro and I'm going to plug the, this into some random things. So now I've got this BeatStep Pro sending a clock over to it and that's the clock out coming from the BeatStep Pro. So the hi-hat you're about to hear is going the same speed as the clock so watch as I change the voltage how it correlates to the hi-hat. Instead of a direct source, I'm going to plug it into an LFO. Now you can see when the clock is going in and the LFO is going in. So it looks like it's doing something reasonably random. But this should be going in, in and out of phase with the drum beat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug some drums into here and just see what kind of wonky drum beats we get out of this thing. Clap coming in from another bit and some other thing as well. And this is already all been sequenced by this LFO. So I've got a quicker speed going in here. So now I've got everything plugged into this one, two, three ADC. All of the beat, all the beat step is doing is uh, kind of telling sort of the notes to play and the clock. Every trigger is coming from this. So yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna press play and uh, show you what it sounds like. <laughs>
it's obviously on the weird side of sequencing and it's yeah it's like a coordinated randomness so this is not the only thing that this can do there's actually quite a few more interesting things that I'm going to talk about soon I'm already talking about it over on my patreon but I'm gonna need to coordinate it a little bit more to make a video about it you can even use it as a down sampler we'll talk about that soon as well if you're interested on seeing how to use this as a down sampler I did a vlog last week on my patreon already it's just I haven't composed the idea enough to like make a video about it there's also a video about it over on my second channel look mum no computer but more serious ish and that's kind of touching on more of the building process and just a bit more bit more detailed talk for what it's worth there's 10 minutes of audio that you can loop to your heart's content coming from this pretty uncoordinated but you never know you might find some interesting breaks in there here and there and that's available over on the patreon as well the information on the strip board layout and stuff like that is over on my website so if you want to build this you can you would have seen in this video the envelope generator this is actually the next module that's coming out i've got to do a few more fine tweaks and this will be out in the first week of february and yeah until next time i've been looking my computer build a one two three adc if you feel like it and don't be scared to try it